Wow. Alright, so episode 11 came out a week ago, and episode 12 came out yesterday, so I'm gonna talk about episode 11 now, and hopefully post about episode 12 tomorrow, so come back and watch that a day after this one releases. I watched episode 11 and 12, and god damn, this was a phenomenal ending to a phenomenal first season. We start where we left off, Aki's meeting the future devil, and based off of the manga, I thought the future devil would be chanting it, like, FUTURE IS BEST! FUTURE IS BEST! FUTURE IS BEST! But in the anime, he sounded much more like a fruitcake. Mirai Psycho! Mirai! The future devil takes body parts or lifespan in order to make a contract, and the future devil wants, well, he wants, I want your cock, Aki. Give me your cock. I'm kidding, of course. No, he doesn't actually want Aki's cock. He wants nothing. He doesn't want anything at all. All he wants is to reside in Aki's right eye, specifically because he wants to see Aki's death, which he says is going to be freaking awesome. I really like how he says it in the anime, but I like the manga too. In the manga, he says, because in the future, you're going to die in the worst possible way. I think that's a really scary allusion to what's going to happen in the future, and I think the phrasing in the anime kind of leaves more up to the imagination, which might be a good thing to some people, but at the same time, I'm not sure how to feel. Aki is flabbergasted at this, but that is okay because he just wants him to get inside his eyeball so he can move on. We cut to Kishibe and he's calling out Makima on her bullshit. He knows she's lying, he knows she doesn't actually have the public safety in mind, he knows that she's up to something, and he says it right to her face. Kishibe is one bad mother. On the other hand, Aki is a weirdo and he is also lame. He's a total chunibyo also known as 6th grader syndrome. Definition, someone who acts like they have special powers or are the chosen one, often showing off high levels of cringe and a deep investment in a narcissistic power fantasy delusion. He knows that he's cringe and he's using it to his advantage. I'm half expecting him to start believing he can shoot Dark Realm and Evil Phantom Shadow laser beams and that he'll have an all-seeing eye of the future. Wait, shit, he does have- Boom! We cut to Makima, talking with the Japanese Mafia. She's asking for the names of everyone who has made contract with the Gun Devil. The Mafia boss complies, but says that he's not snitching on the other gangs around Japan because infighting will lead to foreign Mafia invasions. <laughs> Makima hits them with that light skin stare and then kills a guy and gets what she wants. We cut to a building, another hotel or some shit, but beam, 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 I love beam, I love beam. Beam is finally here, and while he isn't on his master chainsaw type beat, he is still a sweet little shark man, and he's one of my favorite characters. And oh shit, violence fiend! Everybody make some noise! Oh shit! Angel Devil, let's go! Aki's finally giving Ankle Devil. Ankle Devil. Aki is finally giving Angel Devil his handkerchief. We are getting so many iconic panels in this episode. And the next episode, too. <laughs> but the anime is so far doing swell justice with the source material. Seeing everybody fighting in the background while Angel and Aki talk is a nice touch that can't be conveyed as well through the manga, and I think that is a nice change that helps contribute to the little details that the anime can benefit from having. The zombies in the manga look incredible. They're very scary. The zombies in the anime are definitely lacking that style, but it's really hard to keep up that level of consistency in an animation, so I understand the change. Not to mention that they still look phenomenal. Aki goes off in his own and is about to get shot at, but I love how he holds up his sword like he's about to spam left trigger and deflect all the bullets Sekiro style. The CGI is really good in this episode, and I have a little theory about the CGI in these last two episodes that I want to talk about tomorrow, so check in for that. Speaking of CGI, I think it's time to talk about the director and storyboarder for this episode, Masato Nakazono and Takeshi Sato. Nakazono worked on episode 7, and Takeshi worked on episode 8, so these two artists have worked on the show already and have come back for episode 11. Masato Nakazono has worked on quite a bit. I talked about how he directed two episodes of Darling in the Franks, was an assistant director on an episode of Little Witch, and worked as a storyboard artist and director on several episodes of SSSS Gridman. Bad news though, last time I talked about Takeshi Sato, I mentioned that there were multiple listings with his name and that neither of them listed Chainsaw Man, so with no definitive portfolio, I'm not going to say for sure what he might have worked on or not. These are still very talented directors though, and I want to go over some of these segments made by artists that posted their work over on their Twitter. So I'm going to take a second to show some of that. All the artists are credited with their corresponding Twitter tags, so go check out these wonderful artists. This episode covered chapters 32 to a little bit of chapter 35 and it ends with Aki getting choked out. They knew what they were doing. This episode also might have one of the hardest endings so far, using violence by Queen Bee, who also did the opening for Dororo and an ending for Tokyo Ghoul Re, now adding Chainsaw Man to the repertoire. This episode went hard in the paint once again, and don't forget to tune in tomorrow to see what I think about episode 12, the last Chainsaw Man episode. Anyways, I think I'm running out of time right about now, so bye!